where he's at. Yeah, so. yeah. You know where it goes. You know where it goes. this year. We're celebrating the 75th, 71st birthday of the first roller derby and we're back in San Francisco to honor the Bay Bombers, legendary Bay Bomber team. We're remembering and honoring and celebrating the life of the Hall of Famer, the late great Ann Calvello. And we're inducting 12 new people into the Roller Derby Hall of Fame. I'm so excited to be here in San Francisco, the heart of Roller Derby. We're expecting a sensational evening. We're really happy that you're here, too. Thank you. He's working down in L.A. Oh, God. Uh, oh, I got, I got, I got. All right, man. I want to talk to you. I'm going to see you in my mouth. Derby means. Pardon me? What does roller derby mean to you? What does it mean to me? Yeah. It means my life. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Okay. I uh, enjoyed everything I did. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Almost the same <laughs> way. Almost the same <laughs> way. Not quite the same, but I'm You're in the Hall of Fame? Have I, have I been in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. No. I'm not that old yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not saying that I am. I'm not saying that I am. But yeah, I was pleased to have it. Yeah. You know some of the skaters who are going in to induct it? I couldn't hear you. You know some of the people who are inducted today? Uh, yes, I do. I know just about all of them. <laughs> yeah. And they, where do they, where do they um, skate? Where do they skate? Yeah. Where do some of the venues? Then or now? Then or now? Or? Give me a little history about it. Oh, history. We're all over the country. I mean, we were. I mean, all over the world. San Francisco's also. San Francisco. Yeah, we're everywhere. Where in San Francisco do they have their events? Uh, Keys Art Pavilion, Civic Auditorium across the street here, okay. Cobb Palace, 14th Street Armory. Yeah, we were all over. There. Do you train other people to skate? Uh, I haven't had it myself. Personally, I haven't had a pair of skates on in 18 years. Okay. But uh, I could. I would. And, uh, yeah, I would enjoy it. In fact, I'm toying around with the idea of building my own track. Yeah, it's my own personal thing. Yeah, so uh, I'm in the Santa Barbara area now, and I'm thinking about doing something down there. What does it take to become a really good skater? What does it take? A lot of drive and determ determination. Uh, you gotta have a level here, you know, and you gotta be able to be flexible with all kinds of situations. Well, um, I thank you for your time. If there's anything else you'd like to share with um, the Hall of Fame video we're doing, pardon me. Is there anything you'd like to share? Yeah, I want to congratulate all of the inductees that, uh, that are going into the Hall of Fame today. And, uh, uh, and God bless them all. They all deserve it because of the fact that uh, it was a lot of hard work, but it was something that we accomplished. It was something that was done uh, with your heart instead of your head, you know. So, Barola Derby in itself was not only just a physical sport, it's with the heart. And then the head comes along behind that because the heart has to direct the head anyway. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. This is Mike Gammon, one of the top scorers Hi, Mike. of all time. Hi, uh, his mom and dad were skaters, and he is a member of the Hall of Fame. You're a member of the Hall of Fame? Uh, yes, I am. Awesome. I was voted in about three, four, five years ago, something like that. Uh -huh. uh, along with um, a lot of the other just great skaters that have skated over the years. You know? uh, it's kind of a, it's a voting situation where everybody gets to vote on different people. Eventually, um, the people that really deserve being in there, eventually they'll all be in there just as time goes on. Recognition. How many uh, registered skaters, how many leagues are there in teams? Right now? Yes. Oh, gosh. You know what? They've got an organization going with all girls skating, and they've got teams spread out all over the place. There must be 50, 60 teams. Uh, uh, they're, they're just all over, you know, East Coast all the way to the West Coast. You know? You name it, every town's got their own little team going. Uh -huh. Some of them don't have tracks, some of them don't have, they make their own uniforms. But 
they're in production. So that's what counts and that's what keeps things going. You know? And um, have you skated in internationally? or? Uh, I've been overseas and, and stuff like that. Uh, that was years ago. You know, I, actually, I haven't skated in a while. Uh -huh. uh, I'm pretty much basically retired from skating. Okay. There's been leagues that have started up, and uh, I was supposed to go train people and stuff, but I've just kind of basically bowed out of it gracefully. You know, I, mean, I, I had my day, and I'm kind of done with it. You know. Yes. Sir. And um, where are you from now? Well, I'm basically at the Bay Area. The Bay Area. Uh, I've been there for a lot of years, you know. So I just stay there. I mean, that's what I'm used to, and that's good. Cool. So is it you have uh, fans that come out and? Uh... Well, there's always fans around, especially when you do things like this. Right. Yeah. Pretty much when we're, we're not working. When I say working, but when we're not doing things like this, it's you run into fans every now and then. It's oh gosh, I remember roller derby and so on like that, you know. But uh, it's it's kind of on the back burner. You know, people just, because we're not on TV like we used to be, so it's not quite uh, as recognizable. Right. So there's work to get some television contracts? Well, they're always working on that. There's different organizations always starting and trying to start. And, uh, some people just contacted me from uh, Colorado. They wanted me to build some tracks up there for them. You know? and, uh, th there's just always something going on somewhere. The technology of skates is always improving too. Sure, sure. I mean, it just gets better and better. They're lighter and they're faster, you know. And they have a lot be much better padding than uh, we has available for us. Uh, bulk has got a lot to do with it. You know, they've shaved off all the excesses and now they're down to the barest and it works. So the skaters don't get hurt as much. You know? And that's the most important thing, that way you keep working. Wasn't there a film a few years ago? There's been a few films, right? Roller Derby. There's been uh, well, they Kansas City Bomber, then they had Rollerball, then they had an, uh, an up version of Rollerball, then they had uh, Jerry Seltzer produced one. I can't remember what the name of that one was, and I should because I worked for him. <laughs> Those all helped the cause? Uh, yeah. But, um, uh, there's, uh, there's been about four or five different ones. Uh, they did an old one a long time ago with Mickey Rooney, uh, Fireball. So uh, there's, there's five or six different ones out, just different versions of skating. You know? so, thank you. Right. Thank you. The good DVDs that you have here on the table. A lot of people seem to like this one quite a bit. Okay. Uh, we actually have this one. Each of the DVDs has several games on them, and we have the dates and the years that were played. So if skaters want to come and find what games they were in, then we can do that for them. Oh, so that's what's going on here? Yeah. And, um, okay, thank you. I don't know the year, you didn't tell me the year. Well, let, let's get Barbara okay. over here. Okay. okay, this is Bert Wall, Barbara Machira Wall. Bert skated from the 40s up to the 60s and has skated in 1939 to wherever. 37 years. It's in 1961, I heard, or? No, about 1967. Okay. You yeah. had a great career. Yep. All right. So I'd like to give up a piece. I'd like to <laughs> Hall of Fame about 61, wasn't it? Yeah, 61. So you've seen a lot of advances in the technology of skates, I'm sure. I sure have, yeah. All the way from, you know, the track change, the roller skates change. Now, does it matter um, what you have to do in terms of, like, uh, keep in shape? Uh, just have to have good wind and... That's exercise. We used to have the 49ers used to come over and visit when we skated in San Francisco here, and they used to think we were in better shape than they were. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I won't tell we you my age, skaters. but we were skaters and skiers, and we now we play tennis. Awesome. And where do you live now? I live in uh, Sun Lakes, Arizona. Oh. Which is just south of Phoenix, Arizona. Did you you skated in uh, some of the venues in San Francisco then? Oh yes. Okay. I grew up in San Francisco. Well, how come San Francisco, how come there used to be roller derby uh, shows on television? You don't see them that often now. You know, don't why is that? All anymore. Why is that? What happened is a lot of the older skaters didn't want to give up, and they kept chasing the younger skaters away, and pretty soon we ran out of skaters. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that. Are there outdoor places that people can recreationally skate? I mean, uh, that, oh, yes, that there's a, yeah, in Arizona, I would imagine me. there's a lot of places. Uh, at one time, at one time, there's so many people skating in Golden Gate Park, they uh, 
made him stop skating in Golden Gate Park, then he started skating over to Marin County. And roller skating all over the world. It started in 19, uh, 1670 in, uh, in, uh, in France, no, in France with oh, the inline yeah. skates, and then in Holland they came up with the quads on kind of they had all the bumps on the street and couldn't stand up very good. Now did you, uh, you know, it's like one of the images of skaters is that in the competition is that they do a lot of elbowing, right? Is that, uh, well, our, how do you survive a tough elbow? You try to anticipate pull it. Pull up your arm and learn how to fence them off. <laughs> hit their arm up and then hit them on their ribs, you know. You've seen players get hurt though, right? Yes, yeah. She had a broken back. Yeah. And skated a game and a half after that until she decided it wasn't getting any better. And I broke my foot off my leg. I skated 37 years, probably broke the bone every year. Skated. Wow. Broke both shoulders, my collarbone. Oh, my leg a few times. So people can earn a living from uh, com from the competition? We did. Yeah. We were good yeah. at work. So it's basically your team that has to do well as well, right? Yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's a team and what sport. what you do is when you're what we call a top skater and you're a coach, you try to get a team that you really mold them together. It's really teamwork. It really works. So how many members are on a team then? There's uh, five boys and five girls on each team. So it's always and Each team has two alternates. Okay. And how long are the matches generally? The matches last their uh, four uh, 15 minute periods and then uh, half time and then four or more 15 minute periods after. And how many referees are there? How many? It's two or three, sometimes three, sometimes two. Barbara is being inducted into the hall. So um, you know some of the members getting inducted tonight? Yeah, um, I married the one. <laughs> I skated from 1950 to 1965, and uh, my daughter was going to school and had to but, uh, she also home. She also won Rook of the Year one year, she won Most Valuable Player one year, and she won the Roller Derby Queen one year. Whoa! So it's a pity that she finally ends up getting the Hall of Fame. Awesome. Have you been to Burning Man? Have you been to Burning Man? Where? Burning Man? Okay, it's just an outdoor event that happens in the mall oh. once a year. So that would be a great place for a roller derby event. Yeah. Well, we skated in Hutchinson County one time. Okay. Outdoor. <laughs> At the skate fair. The, the biggest, biggest fair in the United States. Well, congratulations for being inducted tonight. And I'm honored. Yes. And um, anything else you'd like to share? Yeah. Nope. We've covered a lot of territory. For 53 years. So you can safely say those who skate together Stay live together. longer together. Stay together. All right. Had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you're being inducted today. Yes. When, when, when did your career start? Uh, which uh, professionally or? Professionally. 19 July 3rd, 1959. Remember the day. I remember the day. My mother got married the same day. You're kidding. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> yes. And um, you've, I've, I would imagine, I've skated in different venues around the country. And yes. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. It was a great life. Okay. You know, I love it. Yeah, who's the lady next to you over here? This is Mary Upel. Oh, Mary? She skated. Uh, Hi, Mary. Mary 37. How's that? She started a long time. Okay. Yeah. So, were you, all, were you on the same team? or no, you were never on the same team. Okay. She was, uh, she skated. Uh, Did she ever elbow you? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. New kid. Yeah. But no, I, 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 I'm shorter. I've got I've got feels up. Oh, but I, I'm shorter. I'm shrinking taller and taller. You know, everybody seems to be taller. What are like what are some of the scores of like of a of a of a match? You know, like what a what's like a usual score of a match? Twenty-six. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't real high scores. No, okay. they weren't. Yeah. 
there were low scores. Yeah. Sometimes you have no score in the first couple of uh, periods. There will be no score. How do you score a point? You have to be a jammer and you have to pass lap and pass the opposing team. For each person you pass, you get a point. Okay. And um, is there like members, do they keep score like how many points a, uh, a player gets in their career? No. They don't have anything like no. that? No. So it's because it's a team score. Right. No. You did what you did and what you could do. Have any of your children uh, taking up the sport? My oldest did for a little while. Uh -huh. She skated for a little while. And I think she stopped last year. I don't know. Um, she doesn't like the way the games are. She likes the old girl. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. The Arnold started out in the Bay Area about 1960-61. Um, then mid-60s went over to National, uh, ended up captaining the Philadelphia Warriors, and now she is a minister. Her, what do we want to talk about? Well, we heard, I found out that um, you were a great skater, and you got inducted last year, was it? Yes, I was. And um, you probably met a lot of friends throughout your oh, career. Oh, I love my role in every career. I met lots of wonderful people, skated with lots of great people, and uh, Is there any, like, the one world. highlight that you can think of that stands out? Uh, well, we give me a couple of them. Yeah, there is there are so many. Uh, it's hard to think of just one. Um, my first year skating in Hawaii was a tremendous highlight for me. I get to meet all those wonderful people and have each day on the beach with Dan Cabello. And <laughs> but I'm just uh, skating against wonderful skaters. Shirley Hardman was one of my very favorites, and uh, I'm sorry that we lost her. Uh, Jan Ballow's here today. She's in one of my greats in the early bird, my teammate. Okay. And, and um, uh, I don't know, just, I love skating. I, I, Did you have any, have any opponents that you didn't like? Uh, Gooch Gutierrez. <laughs> <laughs> Why no, did you like her? No. She played tough? He came too, too much. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of elbows? Sometimes, yeah. yeah okay. Sometimes, yeah. But I loved, I enjoyed skating, and uh, Joni Weston, of course, was one of the uh, <laughs> greats to skate against, and um, I'm just very grateful for the ones that went before us to make a way for us to have roller derby and roller games, because they, Mary Yapel, Bobby Mateer, and Ann's Jensen, and Ann Cavallo, and there's, I can, you know, you could go on and on with the names, but uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have got to do what I got to do, and I'm yes. very grateful for that. They're paving the way for us to, to skate. So what do you think about the, new, the skates that uh, skaters use today? The, are they the roller blades? Yeah. <laughs> Sound ignorant. <laughs> I know they're switching around some, so um, they're, they're good not for me, though. I skate outdoors all the time still. I go down to the, by the river and skate, but I use the quads. I just put outdoor wheels on my skates because I'm not an ice skater and I'm not a roller player. I'm uh, getting a little too old to take a chance, so I, I'm happy on my my four wheels, so that works best for me. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Jan Vallo uh, started with the... Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we cannot... Go with that. We can't keep up, and uh, sometime in the late 50s, we're not going to say exactly... Oh, I know when. I know when. Right uh, after graduation in 58. I promised my folks I wouldn't turn pro until I graduated. I graduated in 58. June, June, so my next game. And this lady skated all over the world. Yeah. And Japan, Hawaii, Australia, the States. She and turned a lot of people on to the sport then. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, not just me, but I mean, it was a great sport. So, great, great sport. Great life. Gave me a wonderful life. Did you always have the same team? Or you had, oh. <laughs> you had been on many teams? No, uh, there was, it, it depended. You know, I was always on. Like they had home bases for teams, but that wasn't my forte. I like the visiting and I like going places. I like stirring up the crowd and then leaving, and coming back later and stirring them up again and leaving. It was it was. Great. And um, so, the players ever get traded? We got moved around. We, do get we got around. moved around. Um, you figure it's a 
very small amount of people that did this for a living. So injuries, uh, people getting married, or, or, you know, retiring required people to be moved around. And you know, it's a lot easier now for, for major leaguers and, and, and you know, professional athletes to be traded. So it's not. It's not and you were inducted to the Hall of Fame. Just. I am going to be. Tonight. I am going to be. Okay, congratulations. On that. Thank you. So you have a lot of your opponents in here tonight? Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a few. There's a yeah. few. And some teammates. Of course, they can be both. You know, they can be an opponent one week and the next week they could be a teammate. So did you ever have like pep rallies before a meet mm -hmm. and so forth? Like, what would you say to each other? Like, Well, yeah, we traveled an awful lot. And, uh, but we... We had a cohesion. You made sure that you got along with your skaters. You needed somebody to back you up. They needed to know that I was there to back them up. And, you know, you can't have a team unless they, they can trust each other. We developed that trust. Who designed the costumes or your your, your uniforms? Could not tell you. Before me. Before me. <laughs> okay. But the pads, they, they, were, they were made out of leather, so when you hit, you slid. Uh -huh. Everybody thinks they were to protect you from bruises, but it wasn't. It was more... Uh, I say to get you to slide and stuff. And as you train and uh, so you learn how to, to fall, learn how to take the rail so that you didn't get hurt. And, and the thing, if you were losing your balance, you learn not to fight it, but to make sure that you could fall where you wouldn't get hurt. It's kind of like and martial the track arts. Gave, yeah. The track game, so you learn how to fall, bounce, get up sometimes. But if you're tired, you just fell. <laughs> or if you got hit really hard, you just fell and then got up. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. And enjoy the evening. Thank you. Okay. Our program uh, saluting the new inductees into the Hall of Fame. We have Terry Lynch, Barbara Mateer, Carol Meyer, Kitty Nils, Jan Vallow, Sid Harness, Russ Masro, uh, Freddie Noah, Ronnie Raines, and Tony Roman. So this comes out uh, every year? Yeah, we do one each year for the Hall of Fame induction and uh, we do a section saluting each skater, give a biography, let, try to let people know some of the things that um, were not readily, readily available. Um, we just try to make something fun that people can look back and remember the skaters from. I have a Yahoo website. Uh, we call it the Roller Derby Forum, and um, we just post topics of interest, talk about the old derby because uh, that's what we all know and love. Um, we grew up watching it, and very few of us can actually explain what it is that drew us to the game, what keeps us coming back. It's just something that we can't explain. Did television play a role in that? Um, yeah, most of us found it through television. Like I saw my first game in 1962 on television. Uh, my brothers and I used to climb up on top of the house and turn the antenna so we could bring the station in. And uh, you know, it was a Saturday ritual. Uh, Two o'clock, we watched the Okay, great. Okay. That's what I'm supposed to go off of. Well, <laughs> what, what would you say is one of the highlights from your career? Do you have any? The highlights are probably as from being a fan and when I started the training center and was scouted and taken out of the training center to be on the Midwest Pioneers and of course I was always a fan of Joni Weston and she was my first captain. So that's probably one of the highlights of my career. Did you see it on television at all? Um, what made me become a skater was I went to my first live game in Lodi, California when I was a junior in high school. And I saw Dolores Tucker, Cole Cox, some girl, and I said, that's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes your opponents uh, can be tough on you too. Oh, sure. And, um, and most... Yeah, and most of the skaters were opponents because my only team members were seven people. So what do you do? You learn how to to avoid being hit or, or ducking, or you learn different techniques and how to fall, of course. In the training center. In the training center. Yes. Is your training program still going on today? Okay. I look at it as when we were in roller derby and we were the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, we were the extreme sport on TV. Now there's so many extreme sports 
roller derbies will never come back. Because I, I think we were ahead of our time. So um, you're here to support your friends who are getting inducted tonight? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Where did you come in from? Uh, Modesto. Modesto? Yeah. Great. Took us almost three hours to get here with the traffic. <laughs> well, thank you for coming here and speaking with us. Thank you. You're welcome. My friend. Ready to talk to Jerry Seltzer, who's Father Leo in Vintage Roller Derby in 1935. And uh, Jerry took over in 1958. And, uh, and I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the best actually, tomorrow is his 71st anniversary of the very first game. Wow. In Chicago in 1935. And it's amazing. We haven't skated in the Bay Area in 33 years. And the minute we said Roller Derby reunion, all of these people showed up. And there's so many skaters here I have not seen them. Very happy years. And the fact that Gary takes the time to put these things together, I don't know how he has time for any other life. It's just absolutely What would you say how would you say Hollywood's impact on the sports fan? Has it been positive or not just, whatsoever? Yeah, you had no control over that though. Not whatsoever. The the, the unusual thing is that out of nowhere, uh, all these women across America Notice the roller girls are taking the essence of the game, using it to train and to have fun. They all have other jobs. There's over a hundred leagues running. It's, it's expanding. So the on, even though it's not totally So you come every year to the uh, Hall of Fame inductions? I've come last year and this year. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I live up in Sonoma, not too far. Was your dad a skater? My dad never skated. But he just loved the sport. Yeah, he, yes, he did. He absolutely did. And actually, Damon Rudd, who's very famous writer, helped him create the rules. And her guys and dolls. Thank you. Bob Sullivan. Hi, Bob. And where are you in from? Sacramento. Okay. And um, what, what was the career, what was the time span of your career? Uh, 73 to uh, 85, something like that. Okay. Uh, all of the Northeast Braves. So, do you have um, friends who are being inducted? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I've met them through the years. Uh, didn't really know them because they had skated before I did. And, uh, but I've met them, you know, through the years. And uh, really enjoyed meeting everyone. You know, it's, it's been a nice career and uh, very enjoyable. Do you have any moments that stand out in the course of the career? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, one in particular, uh, I'm from Sacramento, so when we skated in Sacramento, uh, we were on the track warming up, and uh, we had just gotten through, and I was just coasting around the track, and Joni Weston got on the track, they were going to do their warm-ups. And she came by and she looked at me and kind of smiled and gave me an elbow and down I went. The crowd went crazy. Kind of a little embarrassed and uh, about the time I was getting back up, she came around, she smiled at me and she said, welcome to Roller Derby. So it was kind of uh, an experience. Did you have a shaved head back then? No, I had, I had a little hair. But <laughs> <laughs> this is just recently, like the last two weeks. I, I would imagine you have better aer aerodynamics with a ball. Oh head. yeah. I remember my first first board game was in San Jose, and uh, they kept knocking my helmet off, and they were filming it, and the cameraman came over at halftime, said, uh, you know, he says, Bob, can, can you try and keep your helmet on? And it's like, well, they keep knocking it off. And uh, so I watched the game next week on TV, and all of a sudden I have this big blue view following me around, you know, so I figured out what he was talking about, you know, it was like, but yeah, a lot of experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of oh, roller derby. Yes, I've been a fan since I was about 15 years old. And How did 19. you get turned on to it? I uh, saw my first game on television and got hooked instantly. And, uh, was it ABC? 
was it ABC that had it? No, it was a uh, little independent station. Okay. Uh, back in, I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts, and flew in here from Boston, Massachusetts. So I think I get the award for traveling the farthest to this event. So who are some of your favorite uh, players? Oh, of course, it's uh, Joan Weston and Charlie O'Connell and Mike Gammon and Carol Peanuts Meyer and they're all here. Well, not all of them are here tonight, but a lot of them are. And this is like being at the Academy Awards for me. Awesome. Do you skate on, as a hobby at all? Did you ever try that? I tried it once, and uh, roller disco was popular in the 70s, and I tried it once and was not very good at it, and I have a lot of appreciation for what these guys can do on skates. Awesome. Well, you must be a true fan to come cross-country to see some of your fellow um, enthusiasts. It's like meeting your favorite movie star. Uh, I wouldn't miss this for the world. These are the people I watched on TV when I was a kid, and they were bigger than life back then, and they're bigger than life now, and I just kind of like melt and fall to pieces every time I, I, I talk to one of these skaters, because um, they were my heroes when I was a kid. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, my name is Ellen Seltzer, and my grandfather was Leo Seltzer, and I'm trying to think of uh, some poignant things to say about um, the sport. I think one of the things that I really admired about my grandfather was the fact that he thought of the sport and also that it gave uh, people of many different ethnicities and genders an opportunity to enter into something that um, they might have been kept from. In, in other words, it opened a lot of doors and it got rid of a lot of barriers and the term diversity is bandied about today and roller derby was extremely diverse. There were people of color, there were um, women who later I would find out were with women. but. And, and possibly there were gay men, I don't know. When I was growing up, I was very little, and I sort of knew these people as my extended family. And I just knew them, you know, as Carol Peanuts Meyer, or Charlie O, or Johnny Weston. And uh, I, I didn't really care what their race, gender, etc. was. Um, so, so for that, I, I thank my grandfather, because I think he opened the door to a lot of other sports now. Um, and, and I, uh, you know, people compare roller derby to, to pro wrestling, and I always sort of bristle at that. Uh, admittedly, as a child, it was very noisy for me. I'm a sensitive person, I, uh, and I was extremely little, and I would hide in the TV truck with uh, Pat McCormick and the guys from Channel 2. But the aspect of the game that I really enjoyed was when um, the sheer athleticism was involved, the speed skating and skating around the bank track. And I remember, you know, being a, a toddler and Charlie O taking me around the track in diapers. And I, I wish he was here. I wish uh, I would love to see Charlie O. But this is very exciting to see all of these people. And uh, I think my grandfather would be very proud. And um, I'm not really sure what else. And your your dad is here as well. And my father Jerry is here, and he promoted the Bombers and some of the other teams and traveled around the country promoting roller derby and, and you know built it into this national sport and there have been these other offshoots um what is the season time the time period what season does it oh take uh that's a good question i'm, I'm not sure i mean when did it run from yeah. until you know my recollection was that it was kind of year round i just i remember my dad working a lot every sunday going up to Kizar being interviewed by Walt Harris, the inimitable Walt Harris, and um, I don't know, that's a good question. So it's indoors, so it can be any time of the year? It was indoors, so it could be any time. I remember going as an eighth grader to Madison Square Garden, and my teacher taking us, she took us the wrong way on the subway, and but uh, going and seeing it at pretty much, I think it was a sold out, a sold out crowd, so, you know, pretty, pretty exciting. So yeah, definitely, I mean, you know, when I was younger and growing up, and different people's fathers, or this one was working for Raychem, and that one was working at Stanford, and it was like, your father does roller derby, but now it sort of has a kind of, um, I don't know, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud of it, and it's a part of my heritage, and, uh, and your brother is here too? Definitely had a colorful childhood, shall we say. Yes, my younger brother is here, right. and I have an older brother, Stephen, who's in New York, and my younger brother, Richard, is here with his wife, Karen. So. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> my name is uh, Soren Santos, and uh, 
I'm Salvador Torres. And we're both students of Mr. Keith Cottage, who wrote the definitive book on roller derby. It's called Roller Derby to Roller Jam, the authorized story of an unauthorized sport. We're uh, students of his, and he asked us to come here and become immersed in the sport, so we're here selling merchandise. And uh, roller derby's always been a great interest of mine. I never really got that much into it. Uh, I've seen a couple of the old games, but I really love the Bay Bombers. Go Bombers Go! And uh, we're here enjoying the atmosphere since this How many time. matches are there in a season? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I'm, I don't know that much about the sport. Hey. I'm actually a complete newbie. Okay. <laughs> I know virtually nothing. All I know but is... But you're a merchandise I, Yes. Enthusiast. I sell merchandise. All I know is that... Uh, and you got the t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the t-shirt with uh, being able to sell this stuff. It's nice. You know some of the people. players that have skated over the yeah, years? Yeah, met a few of them. And Cavallo, and Gene, all great people, okay. great skaters. You've been to any Hall of Fame inductees? Uh, no, this is my first event I've ever been to. It's uh, it's really exciting for me. So, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Bombers, a legendary captain of the Philadelphia Warriors, our good friend Judy Arms, to give us a small blessing. skaters here tonight like uh, Hall of Famers Burt Wall and Anna's Big Red Jensen and Judy Arnold and Mike Gannon and the great Mary Uppel and of course tonight joining us here are uh, some of our inductees this year, the great Barbara Bobby Mateer, Jan Ballow, Carol Peanuts Meyer, and we also have some amazing individuals here that uh, just thrilled fans for so many years, like uh, Whirly Bird Harleen Keene is here. Baker is here. Yeah. We have Sherry Eric. Yeah. We have the 
the amazing Nick the Greek Scopist. We have everybody's favorite skater from the Bay Bombers, a great number 34, Dolores Tucker. We have the sensational Pauline Cookie Cadera. We have Sue Cola from the Bay Bombers. We also have Mr. Darnay McPherson. From those incredibly worth his praise. And of course, the former Bay Bomber coach, Mr. Cliff Butler. And we also have from the IRSL years, we have Bob Solomon. We have the incredible Earl Pearson. And of course, we have one of my favorite skaters from the 1971 Ohio Jolters, Verna Vandenberg. And, and of course, this is a real roller derby family, so we have people here like announcer Stu Gans. <laughs> Stu, by the way, is celebrating his birthday tomorrow. Of course, as you all know, tomorrow is the 71st anniversary of the very first roller derby race back in Chicago in 1935. And, we're, and as some of you may know, I'm a ticket seller in New York City. I'm a, I work in a Broadway box office, and of course, so I am just out of my gourd this weekend because we have the first lady of the roller derby box office, Miss Peggy Brown. If you ask her nice, she'll riffle through a few tickets for you later on, okay? <laughs> and of course, uh, this weekend could have happened with so many great fans from all over the country that came here to make this happen. And of course, absolutely. And of course, the, uh, the, the best fan in the Bay Area, and the man who wrote an incredible book called Roller Derby to Roller Jam, the authorized story of an unauthorized sport. I really appreciate everything he did for us, and I want to give a great bit of thanks to Mr. Keith Coppage. I started something called the Roller Derby Foundation back in uh, 2000 when I uh, got to know the late great Ann Calbello. And uh, Ann Calbello really opened up a lot of doors for me and she introduced me to so many skaters and, and I really got to repay a lot of these people that uh, meant so much to me as a kid. And uh, I'll always be grateful to Ann for that and she was an amazing lady. And we started the Roller Derby Foundation and then uh, we started having parties around the country where you know, there's nothing better than fans of this game when they get to meet some of these skaters that they idolized as kids. I mean, to be in the same room with uh, somebody like a Dolores Tucker or a Cliff Butler or a Barbara Matera, Judy Arnold or some of these people, I mean, it just, you know, fans come to me and they say, they say I can't believe that I was talking to Mike Gammon. I can't believe it. So it's an amazing, amazing thing when we do these parties together. And of course, two years ago, I asked Jerry Seltzer if we could reopen the Roller Derby Hall of Fame, and uh, I'm really grateful to his guidance and his support for our, allowing us to reopen the Roller Derby Hall of Fame so that we can honor the accomplishments of all of these amazing skaters. Uh, so I'll always be indebted to Jerry. And uh, Jerry, I want you to come up and say a few words what it means to be here in your hometown of San Francisco. First of all, Gary, you told me last night that you didn't have this 50th anniversary shirt with Leo's picture on it. In 1973, we went broke. And, uh, feel like I've been uh, alcoholics enough. <laughs> um, and I had to shut down the roller derby. It was a 
family affair. We didn't seem to know better than to bring other people in. And when conditions got rough, we couldn't sustain it. And it's kind of life interrupted for a lot of people, and they're in this room tonight. And we feel very, I've always felt badly about that. When Gary called me and said, you know, among other things, these people have never been honored who had, were interrupted at that time. The Hall of Fame was stopped in 1973. There's an awful lot of Hall of Fame people who should be honored. One of whom has been, <laughs> for whatever reason, he wasn't introduced, but it's probably because his garage has more stuff than uh, Gary does. That's Burt Wall. <laughs>
what he is doing for all of you. I'd like everybody who was a fan to stand up, please. Or who is a fan. All the fans, please stand up. And we, we really thank you all for coming here.
but we're so pleased to induct Sid Harness into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame this year. And there was an amazing lady by the name of Terry Lynch, who started in roller derby back in the early 50s. And when National Skating Derby started in the 60s, she was uh, named the first captain of the Los Angeles Thunderbirds. And she was this incredible skater that uh, had a lot of determination. And she was called the fiery Terry Lynch. And Terry Lynch is still uh, living these days in Hawaii. Unfortunately, she's not able to join us tonight. But uh, Terry Lynch is also another inductee into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then we have a lovely lady by the name of Kitty Neals. Bert, you didn't skate with Kitty Neals, did you? You did? Kitty Neals had this incredible, she had this incredible story because Kitty Neals' family were kind of high society and her family decided that she was going to graduate from high school and become a debutante and have a coming out party. But when, in 1935, she saw the roller derby and she decided she had to become a skater. And she was this incredible skater, just an amazing, amazing skater. And at one time, the roller derby did this an incredible publicity campaign where all over the country on billboards and newspapers, they, they wrote, who is Kitty Neals? And of course, it brought in so many fans into the country and they were just amazed by this lady. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Kitty a couple years ago, but we're so pleased that we're going to induct Kitty Neals into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. And one of the great things that happens for me in this whole process is that I get to meet all of these incredible skaters. And I get to pick up the phone and I get to talk to people that I could never dream that I could ever talk to. Um, and one of the people that I got to speak to, and he's a very private person, I really had hoped that he would join us here tonight. But he's uh, one of the most amazing skaters. He was from, he was of Hawaiian descent, by the name of Freddie Noah. And I called Freddie Noah, and I read in the program that it said his father was a Hawaiian chieftain. So I, when I called him, I was so thrilled to talk to Freddie Noah on the phone. And I said, now is it true that your father was a Hawaiian chieftain and that you were born in Hawaii? And he said, no, he said, my father was a band leader. He played the steel guitar. And I was born in Kansas. <laughs> but his parents were Hawaiian. And uh, Freddie Noah was one of these skaters. He was just, many, many old time skaters will tell you, there was nobody better. I mean, he just had incredible agility. He was just amazing on the track. And, and we're so pleased that we're inducting Freddie Noah into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. And again, as I said, we're, we're still trying to honor the skaters who were part of the National Skating Derby Roller Games. And unfortunately, uh, this skater, we haven't been able to track down. And, and in fact, I have to be honest with you, a fan contacted me recently and said he was a private investigator. And we hadn't been able to contact the skater. So we asked him where the skater might be and if he could try to track him down. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But Ronnie Brains was one of the most amazing skaters in the history of the National Skating Derby. He was a flat track champion. He bypassed the training center. He became a skater in the roller games. He was one of the most amazing performers. I mean, there was nobody better who would sell a race or sell a series or a game. They called him the psycho. So of course, one of our, one of our friends, uh, Ken Arruda here from Boston said, well, of course you can't reach him, he's in a mental institution. <laughs> but anyway, we're really pleased to honor the incredible accomplishments of Ronnie Reigns by inducting him into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. You know, every year when we get these ballots back from the skaters and we start tabulating them, uh, you know, it always breaks my heart because there's, there's always a skater that might come in like, you know, we, this year we honored uh, five men and five m women. And then we might get to a skater and they're like number six on the list. And he's like, oh man, I just wish they could be in the Hall of Fame this year. You know, and this happened last year with a gentleman who uh, came in number six among the men. And uh, I know that he was, he was really happy though because his beloved bride was inducted into the Roller Derby Hall of Fame last year, Mary Upel. And, and Russ Nastro was one of these skaters. Russ Nastro came out of Chicago 
The same neighborhood with people like Freddie Nola and Ken Monty and the Lewis Brothers and Sid Harness. And he was, he wanted to be in the roller derby in the worst way. And when he finally got in the roller derby, they, they said that he was the clumsiest skater they had ever seen. I mean, they just couldn't believe that he was in the roller derby. But Russ Mastro willed himself to become one of the greatest stars in the history of the game. And, and Bert, I know I haven't asked you, but I'd love you to come up here and just share, share a few thoughts about Russ Mastro with you, if you could. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you.
And she was one of these skaters in the tradition of a Jerry Murray where she could jam, she could block, she could do everything. She was a phenomenally amazing skater. And during the early 60s, she was right up there. All, every single game, she was the premier star of the game. And we always, I always call her roller derby's princess. She's just such a beautiful lady. She skated with the LA Braves for so many years. And we always say that, you know, the princess even got the prince because she married Burt Ball. So, this year we are really honored and so overwhelmed that she's here to join us as we induct her into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. I want you to all say hello to Miss Bobby Mateo. Next on Roller. 
I didn't know what it was, but I watched it. I was hooked on the spot, and pretty soon, Bobby Bonds, Linda Covey, still had admiration for them. But they were replaced by Julian Silva, <laughs> Lou Donovan, Joe Canterbury. Oh, you can applaud those guys anytime. <laughs> and I watched it on Sunday night. I convinced my parents to turn off Bonanza and watch the roller derby. My parents were horrified. <laughs> We watched it anyway, and Walt Harris said there'd be a game in every city on this special road derby network, and I thought, well, it could be in Antioch. Who could go to Antioch? In August of that year, there was Cliff and Dolores uh, up against the Braves. The Braves won, and I was hooked for life. Whenever I encounter any of you uh, and we meet for the first time, you're always surprised to find out that, uh, that we remember you. You're surprised at the little artifacts we have. And because roller derby is, is not the NFL, we have to hang on to whatever we've got. And, uh, like, you know, I meet other fans, and, and it's a little embarrassing kind of the things that we have. We'll have uh, road maps that were in somebody's car on a road trip. I've got, um, I was telling the group today, I got motel reservations from the 1971 tour, like the list of who was where and all that. And it's crazy stuff because there weren't a lot of souvenirs then. We hung on to everything we could find or everything we could bid off eBay. Um, but there was nothing like the Bay Bombers in the Bay Area. Uh, and everything you've heard is true. And then some of the Bay Bombers out through every sports team, every sports concern in the Bay Area, except the Giants, year after year after year. Uh, it's, uh, they were the only uh, professional team ever to escape on an aircraft carrier. Um, Bobby was there. Uh, they were the only uh, professional team to play a sport uh, on a racetrack. A lot of other places, a lot of other wild things. Uh, certainly the only other major league sport ever to come to Antioch and Ukiah and other places like that because the philosophy then was we bring the game to you. And we went out and saw you guys and uh, I, can, I can remember the lineups to this day. If I wanted to find out who won the game, the scores were in the paper. You had to go to the last page in the sports page, but there they were at the rock bottom. And you could find out who won. We were lucky in that regard. We were the luckiest fans in all of roller derby because we were never more than about an hour, hour and a half away from any game. And we could drive anywhere that you drove to see you. And, and a lot of fans did. Um, I was at Keys Art Pavilion yesterday. Jerry had not been there in 33 years. I had seen some games there uh, by successful ones in the 80s, and it looked small. But you'd be happy to know the paint is still peeling, and there's still no dressing rooms to speak of, and the bathrooms are terrible. And, you know, it's still Keys Art, so some things never change. One thing that I think that has changed is that uh, people have forgotten what an impact World Derby made, the number of charity events the game uh, was played for, uh, and, and how many wonderful things happened in result of the Bay Bombers, how they were the number one show forever and ever on KTVU. Um, they helped build the station after they landed a contract with the Bombers. Uh, they said, maybe we should try, they, they gave them the impetus to try for the Giants. The Giants are still with KTVU. On Sundays, I still wish I could turn them off and find the bombers there. And it's because of all of you. Don't be surprised that we've got this love for you after 33 years. To me, Lou McCovey, he's great. He's no Mike Gannon. <laughs> Institution. Uh, there have been a lot of successor bombers. Uh, a couple of them gave it a really good uh, college try to be uh, successors to the original team, but the Orange and Brown uh, will be America's team in the hearts of any role we've been. It took me a long time to realize it's not coming back. Uh, there's a zillion reasons why, and I think probably it's because the original could not be duplicated. And I think it's, it's because of you. When I saw that first game, I couldn't wait to go. I was hooked, and this is all part of Jerry's sinister strategy to get us so involved with the road, there'd be nothing else would happen, but I had to be there. I remember um, there was this match race, Ken Money and Annis against Charlie and Joni, and I had to be there, of course. Then I thought, well, that was that. And then the following week, this was Ronnie Robinson and Bob Woodbury against Charlie, so I had to be for that. Little by little, I had to be there for all those races, and. Uh, I never regretted it. 
and I was a fan to the end, uh, and I'm still a fan. And I want to thank you all. Go Bombers, go. Thank you, Keith. As I said, the Bay Bombers became America's home team. And because of Jerry Seltzer, everybody across the country fell in love with roller derby all over again. And it was this amazing thing where the Bay Bombers would skate in uh, the, the San Francisco area from April until September. The games would be videotaped, the games would be sent all across the country to a, an incredible network where, you know, fans were told, oh, by the way, come out to see Roller Derby live in January when the Bay Bombers will be skating the Roller Derby All-Stars. And the tour became so huge that uh, in 1969, the San Francisco Bay Bombers had to be split up into two teams, the Oakland Bay Bombers and the San Francisco Bay Bombers. And of course, then the announcers would say, Fans, make sure that you see all of your favorite Bay Bombers to come out to both games in St. Louis when the roller derby comes to town. And as America was falling in love with uh, the roller derby all over again, they fell in love with these two incredible skaters from the Bay Bombers, a husband and wife team. I have to tell you, Tony Roman, I really wish Tony Roman was here tonight. And when I watch games with him, so I have to tell you honestly that as a fan, I was a huge, huge Mike Gammon fan, okay? To me, Mike Gammon could do no wrong. I mean, I loved Mike Gammon. He was the best. I mean, I just idolized Mike Gammon. As an adult, though, I've been watching games with Tony Roman, and I am just blown away by Tony Roman. I mean, the incredible skating ability that this man had. And again, like I said, one of the great thrills and things that happens to me with the Roller Derby Hall of Fame, is that I get to meet all of these people that I idolized as a kid. And uh, I tried for months to get a hold of Carol Peanuts Meyer, and I couldn't, I could never reach her. And finally she wrote back to me, she said, I'm really, really busy, I work a couple jobs, I raise puppies, chihuahua puppies. <laughs> she said, if you want to call me, call me at 11 o'clock Pacific time. And being in New York, I thought, that's 2 o'clock in the morning, you know? <laughs> So I stayed awake, and of course, as, as it got closer and closer to 2 o'clock, the little roller derby fan inside me got so excited and thought, oh my god, I'm going to be talking to Carol Peanuts, my, what am I going to do? So, so I hesitated, and I, and I, and I sat there, it was like, like 2.08 in the morning, and I thought, this is nuts, just pick up the phone and call her. And I say this so often to skaters, I got on the phone with Peanuts, and I started talking to her, and we didn't hang up the phone until 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> And you know, I said to her, I said, I feel like I've known you all my life. But the truth is, I have known all these skaters all my life. I mean, these people are really my family. So, you know, this is why we do what we do, because of these incredible skaters. And when I talked to Peanuts, she told me on the phone, she, she said she, she lived in the Bay Area, she followed the roller derby, she used to sneak into the game, she used to like wait up top until the bad skaters went by and she dropped soda on top of their heads. <laughs> <laughs> and she knew, she knew that she was this tiny little gal. Uh -huh. She knew that she was this tiny little gal and she said she skated and she skated and she trained and she trained to build up to her endurance. And she told me that on July 3rd, 1959, it was the day before the 4th of July, she was out selling fireworks. And Kenny Consulman came here and said, hey, we need a skater tonight, you're gonna skate. So she ran home, she got ready, you know, she got to the dressing room and she said the great Midge Tuffy Bersoon, the great Hall of Famer roller derby was sitting there. And when Nuts walked through the door, Tuffy took one look at her and she said, why, did you comb your hair with an egg beater? <laughs> but you know, as we always say, Carol was a new kid on the track that night and there weren't a lot of fireworks. But over the years, she became one of the most incredible skaters that the roller derby ever saw. I mean, we not only want to honor the, the really big skaters out there, but we really, really want to honor those little skaters who just made were the biggest little things in the game. So I'm so pleased that tonight we have Carol Penis Meyer and her family here, and that we're going to honor Carol Penis Meyer Roman and the entire Roman family. We are inducting Tony Roman and Carol Penis Meyer into the National Roller
another one that got a, a, a coke on his head. <laughs> but anyway, um, I want to thank everybody who voted. I really wanted Tony. I didn't care if I didn't get it because I really wanted him to get it because I know he's getting it so hard and loved it so much. But um, I want to thank everybody for voting. And the way I looked at it, we're all Hall of Famers. Thank you. Thank you. So one day saw the roller derby on TV and she absolutely fell in love with this game. And she just knew she had to be in this game. And she went to the training center and she was taken under the wing by incredible skaters like Gene Porter and Terry Lynch and the late great Joan Weston. And, but she had promised her family that she wasn't going to go into the roller derby until she graduated from high school. And she told me, she said, she was really, really good and she knew that she could be a skater. And she said, she said, you know, I reasoned like, well, the, the girls only skate the first and the third and the fifth and the seventh period. She said, I could be sitting on the bench doing my homework every night. I mean, what difference would it make, right? But she did promise her parents that she wouldn't skate until she graduated from high school. So she graduated from high school one June night in 1958. And the next night, she made her skating debut with the Los Angeles Braves. Now, I have to tell you something about Jan Vallow. Something else really important, too. You see films of Jan Vallow. She became the 1959 Roller Derby Rookie of the Year. But the amazing thing when you see the tapes of, and the films of 1959 is that here's this skater on a team with Annis Big Red Jensen, a Hall of Famer, and Cal Vallow, a Hall of Famer. Miffy, Gloria Miffy Mifsa, who I wish was here tonight, and we all send our love and prayers to Miffy. But here was Jan Vallow on this team as a rookie, and there she was at the back of the pack blocking. And then the next jam, she'd be out scoring. And then at the next jam, she'd be in the back of the pack blocking again. She was an amazing, amazing skater. Now, unfortunately for roller derby, she left roller derby and she went to the National Skating Derby in the 60s. And she kind of had her priorities right because uh, she decided she wanted to raise her family. And she had two beautiful children. And she kept it all sort of in stride and she kept a balance about things. But she became one and she became a superstar in the National Skating Derby with the New York Bombers in the 60s. And fortunately for all of us, she came back to the original roller derby in 1970. And Jan Vallow continued her career. I mean, there was nobody who could skate better red than Jan Vallow. She was just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> because the thing about Jan Vallow is she had the skating talent. She was just simply an amazing skater. And as much as you would hope, you know, hiss her and boo her and, you know, fans would throw things. She told me somebody one night tried to stab her. You know, she was so good at her job. I mean, the one thing that people always knew about Jan Vallow, that she was this amazing skater. And if you were a true fan of the game, you couldn't help but love Jan Vallow. And again, she is somebody that, when we reopen the Roller Derby Hall of Fame, somebody that I knew would be in the Hall of Fame, because she is simply an amazing skater. She loves this game. She loves all of you. She loves the fans. She's given so much to this game. And I'm just so, so happy that this year we're inducting Jan Vallow into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. Well, I'm going to accept this award for all the great shows. Everybody else up here who I should have been accepted this award. I didn't bring my family up, because they know when I'm doing my thing, I want anybody to know that they're my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 There's so many people to thank. He's named some of them. Johnny, Gary, 
everybody and all of you out there. Um, it's true, I love this game. From the first one that I saw, and I want to give back to it. Pleasure being to me. I want to give back to all you fans. A big thank you because of you, we all still are relishing what we did for a living. We get your relish in the fact that we did it and we were pleased. And I can't tell you how much that pleases me and how grateful I am to all of you for the pleasure you're giving us now and then a small payment for uh, the pleasure we give you to keep us alive in your hearts and out on the forefront. It just makes an awful lot. And I'm sorry for those of you who started skating. Unfortunately, it quit before a lot of you would have a chance to be in the Hall of Fame. There's something that would have deserved it had you stayed in and stayed you know, and going. And for all of those that haven't gotten this yet, hopefully we'll get to all of them. And I want to thank all of you for the incredible amount. Thank you. You know, I have this little roller derby fan inside me who, who just can't believe that I'm sitting here and Judy Arnold is sitting right there, you know? It's just amazing. And I always try to remember everybody and I always try to remember to thank everybody. And I, and, and I, but I always forget somebody and I don't mean to do that, of course. So I really want to thank two people also for coming tonight. Um, I thought I mentioned him earlier, but maybe I didn't, okay? The great skater from the Northeast Braves, Mr. Darnay McPherson. great skater from the roller derby era who, who just, when I heard from him, I said, oh my lord, I can't believe that you're going to join us, because he was always one of my favorite skaters. Let's say hello to Mr. Ronnie Turbin. Yeah. Okay, well, I hope I didn't forget anybody else. If, any, if I forgot anybody else, would you raise your hand? <laughs> Next go, was I mentioned you already. Cliff Butler, of course we did, yeah. We, Sherry Eric, we mentioned Sherry Eric, of course, yeah. Whirly Bird, we mentioned Whirly again, yeah. And Whirly, by the way, has told me that she will match race anybody in the parking lot after the event tonight. first network voice 
of roller derby. He was the one when roller derby first appeared on TV, he was the one announcing it. The cameramen didn't really know what they were following, so it was up to the announcer to say, oh, and now Mary Upel is streaking down and she's coming to the back of Oh, we're sorry that the cameraman missed that. But if you come to the next roller derby live game in your neighborhood, you'll get to see all the great exciting action that the cameraman missed. <laughs> Ken Nidell was this incredible announcer and he gave so much to this great sport. And we're really happy this year to be inducting Ken Nidell into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame. And our first inductee into the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame announcer's wing is a man who became synonymous with roller derby. Walt Harris first appeared uh, on TV back in the late 40s. He was a radio announcer. Um, when Jerry Seltzer began doing games out here in the West Coast and videotaping games, he was looking for an announcer and he came across Walt Harris. Well, no one really understood how important Walt Harris would be for the game. Now, Walt Harris was this, this sports announcer that gave so much credibility to the sport. You could tell that this man absolutely loved the game. And, and Walt Harris, he would stand there and you would see these skaters on the track and they would like be pounding each other and clobbering each other. And then at the end, Walt would just bring out their humanity. And he had so much charm, and he was such an amazing announcer that the, the skaters, you couldn't help but love Walt Harris, and you couldn't help but love these skaters. Walt Harris is one of the most incre incredible individuals I've ever talked to on the phone. He was supposed to be here with us tonight. I'm sorry that he's not here. He's had some health issues lately. He still lives up in uh, uh, Danville with his wife, Carmel. And unfortunately, they lost their son a few months ago. So I know that we all, uh, uh, Walt is in all of our thoughts and prayers. But Walt Harris is the first inductee into the announcer's wing of the National Roller Derby Hall. Of course, fans of our generation still remember Walt Harris. We just waited for the first glimpse of that bank track on TV, and Walt Harris would say, from Golden Gate Park, from Keysar Pavilion in Golden Gate Park in the beautiful city of San Francisco, it's roller derby. And of course, all the fans are just in town after that. So I'm really pleased that Walt is uh, being inducted as a Hall of Fame. Now I'm going to tell you something. Now when we first came out here to San Francisco, when we planned this event a year ago, um, we had really, of course, planned to uh, honor Ann Calvello for her incredible achievements and accomplishments in this sport. And we did honor Ann this year with a Lifetime Achievement Award for her incredible contribution to this game. And I know that uh, everyone misses her tonight. And if she was here, you know she'd be the life of the party, that's for sure. But when we came back to San Francisco, there was one person that we really wanted to honor. Because this lady, you know, I had watched, when I first watched roller derby on TV in the late 60s, I saw this woman who was captain of the Northwest Cardinals, and she appeared on TV to be this really huge woman. I mean, she was just a giant. And then, over the years, as I started watching skating from the 40s and the 50s, I got to watch this lady skate, and I noticed she was really tiny. She was like this little ball of energy, this compact little lady who was, just had so much energy. And of course, she was the very first captain of the Bay Bombers. And she's an incredible legend and an incredible lady. I'm just so thrilled that she's here to join us this weekend. And she's been this afternoon at a round table discussion. Well, I gotta admit, we just couldn't get her to shut up. <laughs> oh. You know, the thing is, I used to write her, I would write her cards every once in a while and she would, she would send back a card and she would say, thank you, love Anna. And I thought, okay. And then, and, and then last summer, in October, she came to our event in Palm Springs. And I just fell in love with this lady. I mean, this lady is incredible. She never backed down from anybody. She was a phenomenal skater. 
And I love when she talks about her girls. She always talks about her girls. I mean, and she was somebody that, she had so many girls on her team, like, that became incredible superstars of the game. Like Hall of Fame inductees this year, Jan Vallow and Carol Peanuts Myers and Roberta Mitchell and Judy Sawinski and, of course, Judy Arnold. And this was a lady that really protected her girls and taught them so much. She's a living legend. And I am so thrilled that she's here, and I want to thank her so much for an incredible career, a sensational life, and this year the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame is giving their Living Legend Award to the great Annis Big Grand Jensen! so much help during the year from so many phenomenal fans and I get such incredible support from so many people that I just love and I, I just can't thank them enough. So I hope that you continue to spread the word about the National Roller Derby Hall of Fame and the Roller Derby Foundation and uh, we see you at many more events down the road and again thank you so very much for coming out here tonight. I hope you stay and reminisce and talk the night through. Thank you so much. tomorrow. We're going to have brunch tomorrow morning, 10.30 in the morning. It's right around the corner here in the uh, restaurant in the lobby.